Hi everyone, welcome back to your channel. In today's tutorial, I would like to explain how you can uh, see the data in web UI of Influx TV. Uh, as you know that in version 2, by default, there is a web UI and you can monitor, you can observe all the data, you can create a token and so on. But in version 3, by default, there is no such this kind of the UI in the server of the Influx TV. But there is some add-ons, which is the extra feature, and they call it Influx TV version 3 Explorer. And this uh, capability, it allow you to observe the data. So if you are interested in this topic, please stay with me until end and uh, get started. As you observe, this is the official website of Influx TV, and you need to uh, uh, find it in. You can search it in Google, and you will uh, find this um, a page. It will navigate to this page. So uh, normally, I'm coming here, and you can see here need Windows. Click on that one, and it will navigate you to another page. Here, there is a drop down list and uh, you will find influx tv3 explorer this item which is uh, required and we this is our target uh, there is uh, some explanation about the install and run influx tv version 3 explorer unfortunately only uh, the docker mode of the disk uh, in, in Explorer is available. I well, I try to find uh, we can say the exe file to install it in my uh, Windows machine, but I couldn't find it. It's just only Docker container is available, and if someone knows how it can be uh, installed through the exe file, please drop in comment below at least uh, we, we we will know about this uh, item as well okay uh, let's uh, continue with our topic so if you scroll down in this page uh, there is some explanation that how you can uh, run uh, in a docker container and this is actually is a complete command which you need to use it and uh, definitely there are some uh, explanation for each par part of that which is uh, for the docker run uh, and also there are uh, the name of the explorer there is a port here it mentioned and uh, there are some items which is optional which means if you remove this part also it is possible to run uh, the uh, Docker container for Explorer, but the point is that once you pause or restart your machine, then uh, everything will be deleted because it will not save in uh, the memory, and uh, there is no directory to keep the the record or log of the that data. So it, everything will disappear. Then. Uh, you you cannot find it this this is uh, my experience and i i have done uh, so i suggest you use all these command together which will help you even you uh, stop your windows or stop the docker container then it's still it's available and you can uh, use it in next time when you running again your docker controller so uh this is the the URL which you will use it for connection and uh, so you need to drop this uh, command to docker desktop so let uh, together already I have done uh, one time but I'm going to remove it again and let me uh, bring my Please make sure if you will uh, drop this command as a one line and there is no any 
space in between. So I did run okay then now it's fine when I'm closing this item you will see here there is an influx DB which now currently is running so I'm going to uh, run here you go this is a local host 8888 uh, this you can see here nothing is available the, everything is zero there is because there is no uh, we can say the server or is not recognized the, the database which you already have and is up and running uh, uh, I, I forgot to, to mention that before you come to this part please make sure your server is up and running okay this is this is very important if you don't know how uh, you need to run the server, please watch my previous video, which I explain how you can run the InfluxDB. So for running this part, you have to uh, come to the uh, manage, uh, sorry, in uh, configure part, and then come to the server, and you would need to define your server here so i'm going to define some name here as an uh youtube test uh let's call it as a youtube test tool and then there is then one url this url uh because i have one uh, influx tv in my machine so i'm using this url to connect the container with my uh, URL. Otherwise, you could drop that if if uh, your influx DB all is in one container, you can use that default uh, URL of the explorer. That's not the big issue. Then here you need a token. So I need to copy and paste my token. Uh, that is my token here, and I'm dropping my token okay perfect then uh we have now our database let's see here you go you now you will find all the information from your database are coming as a one overview about that the health of the server about the, the how many lines the data are available and so on then uh if you want to query the data there is some part as a query data who here you see in the left side in the panel then go to the data explorer it was been uh, the memory of that uh, so before because i was uh, uh, checking that one that's why it's in my browser memory so here you have to first in uh, select your database which is this is uh, the database which I have defined and then uh, exactly same as other database you can write the query I writing select everything from weather which is the bucket name and run the query when you run the query it will uh, show you all the data which is available in your database even uh, you also can check one specific data if you want just to see the the temperature or if you want to just see the date day time you know, or either you can see humidity it's also possible uh, if you let me bring all the data here it is all the data if you want to see the data as a line chart you will find the data as a line chart here if you want to see as a bar chart it's also uh, the bar chart it's available and you can uh, see the data it's exactly uh, same as uh, other the query you can write the query and get the data in case you want to uh, write the data 
not just a query that you want to write the data. There is a two option. One option was you can drop it in uh, CMD command, which uh, I think again in my previous video I I shown you how you can uh, add the data into database, or you can come here in the write data, and then the, there is the item as a layer, and here you can see in the line protocol it's already explained this uh, right side is explained to you how you can write your data and how it should be there is a data type you need to uh, take care of the time stamp it's, it's very important this uh, accuracy if it's the, the nanosecond it should be in this way if it's uh, the microsecond uh, should be this way or millisecond in uh, should be in, in this solution so you can also use the some of the, the website to convert your uh, ideal we can say that the date time and then drop it into uh, this system get back to this part you can find the uh, database and uh, if the database uh, you, you 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 need first to select your database name and then uh, let me find some query data which before I made it here there is a sample as a measurement and also the value and time stamp. So here I have the name of the weather, which is uh, the bucket name. And there are some more attributes as a location, temperature, humidity. And this is the time stamp of that. Let me just change something to be more, let me say 10 here. Give it as a 83, 1083, then write data. Here you go, you can see here this is a successful write to Influx DB, and then you can come here and query the data. So let's look at this 8310. Hmm. Again, I think. It was for for the time stamp. I think I made again a mistake, and it was not the the right time stamp because basically uh, Influx DB take nine, uh, as a nano second, so that's the reason. To make it as a let me try with another one. Fifteen. Let's do it. Oh. Fifteen. Fifteen. Invalid because okay, because of the comma. So let me check it again. Fifteen, fifteen. Yeah, now is correct because of the the time stamp. Is based on the nanosecond and you have to make sure you are dropping that value as a nanosecond otherwise it will uh, bring uh, another data okay perfect I think uh, uh, for this session we already completed all the points just one more uh, item I would like here to highlight it uh, because probably 
this is the item which for the next time we can discuss about that and that is about the plugin libraries this part is the plugin library and there are um, some uh, library which, which will help you to uh, do some action in uh, via this explorer one of them for example is notification sender which will send notification uh, to the whatsapp sms uh, and so on so you can define some uh, uh, threshold and then will send this notification to the some person just uh, I wanted to highlight this point because this is a, one of the topic which in future I will uh, make video about that to, to show you how you can run the project about these uh, the plugins but again uh, there are a uh, few more plugins and really uh, each one of them can make uh, one tutorial about that how these items will work and how is useful okay perfect uh, so uh, I think we are complete for this session and if you think this uh, tutorial was helpful please don't forget to like button and if you didn't subscribe my channel please do subscribe and support me uh, and if you have any question please drop your question in comments below definitely i will take a look and get back to you in the right time thank you again and see you next one